And welcome back. Well, one reason memoirs are popular is because they let us get a peek into someone else's life. Yeah, but what makes a really good memoir? Carol Barrowman is an author, English professor, and reviewer for the Milwaukee Journal <laughs> Sentinel. Brownie eater, too. And she's <laughs> here with her recommendations for a great memoir. Truly good brownies. Truly good. What was yeah. the green? Do you know what the green was that was in it? Um, the, I, the healthy I, ingredients? I, I think there was maybe black beans. Something. It was, I know oh. there was no grains in it. Okay. What was it, Maria? I don't know. Oh, zucchini. zucchini. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they were, okay. They were delicious. They were super chocolatey. Black beans. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you just knew they were healthy. I just like to read. <laughs> don't ask me about baking. It's so what true. What do you think about Jenny turning the books around so you can't see the title? Honestly? Yeah. Oh, it made me so nervous. I lo I just can't. No, don't do that. Ah! Why? Don't do that. Because <laughs> you need to see the title of the book? Yeah, and we work so hard on our books, and you just turn it around, and it's paper. <laughs> it's just fashion, it's Carol. Just <laughs> no, I, I mean, really, I get the whole idea, and I think she should come and organize my shelves for me is yeah, what I think. Yeah. But as a writer, oh, man, no, let us see the title and my name. <laughs> oh, yeah, the name, too, the, the author. Name. Yeah. I love it. Anyway. What do you think of memoirs? What's the difference first between an autobiography and a memoir? Well, a memoir is usually a slice of life. It's okay. a little bit, so you take not the a, whole thing. Not the whole thing. You take the exp an experience or two and you build around that and so on. And whereas an autobiography, you tend to get the whole sweep of a person's, li a mm -hmm. person's life. What makes a memoir great? I think what makes a memoir great is a number of things, but the main thing is does it increase your empathy? Does it make you, mm. does it really touch your soul? So it's more than just sharing an experience with someone. It's like really understanding the world that they're bringing you into and, and being able to empathize with the experience they went through. Also a really good mem memoir can, can sort of teach you how you might respond in a similar situation if something like this happened to you. Right now, there's a lot of memoirs out there that are very, um, tr about really intense traumas. Mm -hmm. And why would you want to read that and put yourself into that situation? And I think it's because it lets us share a sense of humanity with people that we emphasize we've all got heartache in our lives or at some point. And, and a really good memoir touches you on a deeper level, I think, than just reading about what happened. Yeah. You know, it's like, how did they deal with what happened? How did, and how does that make me feel about the world and who I am as a human being and connected to other people. Okay. Mm. That's I interesting. So. And I think you're right. I do think we want to we want to feel something. You know, we want to be moved. So let's kind of go through yeah. the ones you suggested yeah. here and tell us what each one of these maybe may may bring us, right. you know, as a Absolutely. feeling. Absolutely. The first one is Educated. This is by Tara Westover. I love this one because um, she lives in a family of survivalists in Idaho. Love that. And never gets an education in any way at all except for, you know, how to grow things and, and survive. A brother leaves, comes back educated. Now the author has a PhD from Harvard. Um, she did our Cambridge, she went to Harvard. She's got all these amazing degrees and she left the, the survivalist um, mindset and went out and got herself a formal education. But it changed her in a way that for me as an educator, it was like, it re helped me understand a little better about what it means to be educated mm -hmm. and that it might not necessarily be all those degrees and, and it might be a, a little bit, m there might be something deeper in us mm. for that. But the fact that she had the, the verve to get up and get out of that situation, I couldn't put this book down. I read it on the plane. I've been traveling and I read it on the plane. It, huh. was, an, it was an amazing that book. Quick. I educated. learned a lot. Uh, yes. Okay. Really, really good book. Interesting. A Thousand Naked Strangers. Despite what the title says, okay. this is a book about first responders in Atlanta. Darn it. Oh. Yes. I'm just I know. Yeah. Right? Right? <laughs> so what I learned about this is how you have to really keep a sense of humor when, you're when you are really dealing with very bad stuff. Uh, uh -huh. So these are first responders on the streets. The, the person who wrote the book was a journalist, so he knows how to tell a really good story. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, it's all about... The horror, you know, violence, gun violence, domestic violence, and yet you come out of it feeling like really life affirming. And he, he uses some really dark humor too. So I think that was one of the things that I really learned from this book. Is the word naked in the title to kind of talk about how stripped down and vulnerable these people are? Yes, it's, yes, okay. absolutely. A really good point to make, Tiff. It really is. It's all, and, and, and they also do run across a lot of naked bodies oh. on the streets. <laughs> but well, yes, it works as a metaphor. Then, right? yeah. Yes, <laughs> it's definitely a metaphor for his theme that okay. th this is who we are at the really fundamental parts of us. Mm. Okay, what about It's Okay to Laugh? 
Um, this uh, book someone cute recommended cover. to me. Isn't it a cute cover? Yeah. It's a couple that fall in love, and then right after they uh, fall in love, he, they realize he has terminal cancer. He's not going to mm -hmm. survive this. And I think we've all been in those kinds of situations or know people. So this is what the book that really your empathy is uh, really brought into play here. They get married, they have a baby, and they literally live their life as if it's their last day because mm. for him it could be. Wow. So it's just. Oh, I would think that's hard to read. Yeah. It, 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 it is hard to read, but I, this is the one that I really came out of thinking, you know what? You just have to embrace what you have at the moment and yeah. live for what you have. And love really is something special if you have it in your life. Yeah. It and really it may be is. gone tomorrow. It, right. And, and that's what this book is about. It's a beautiful book. Beautiful. Yeah. The last one, Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. This is my funny, breezy yeah, one. Yeah, all right, funny, we need a little break. One. I'm a huge Gilmore Girls fan, and this is a collection of her essays. This is probably more autobiography, maybe even the memoir. She tells lots of stories about how she got into acting, lots of behind the scenes stories on parenthood and Gilmore Girls. It's funny, it's light, but you, you really get some lessons about how to be a woman in the, in the business. I like this one. Plus, it's always nice to have a breezy read. Yeah. It's a memoir. Something yeah. kind of quick and yeah. light. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. I like that. Good, good. That runs a whole gamut of emotions. You can follow yeah. more about Carol Barrowman at her website. It's barrowmanbooks.com. Thanks, Carol. You're welcome. Great to see you. Thank you.